hi everyone i'm just making sure facebook can find me or i let's be honest i can find facebook or whatever and i had to be really careful because the last couple of times i've tagged on to the event facebook has then made me go portrait instead of landscape so tonight i was i was really you know making doubly 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 sure sort of thing right the camera's a little bit further away but i'll i'll bring it down uh, it's just easier for me at the moment whilst I just do some stamping. So, evening all, evening. So I'm just picking up some rubbish off my floor before I trip over on it. How is everyone? Thank you. Hi, Alison, Dominique, Caroline, Dawn, Sue, Jane, Sam, Pauline. Oh, hi, Chris. So... Right. Hi, Shaz. I thought what we do tonight is we're going to, um, I did try and show as many frames off as I could, but obviously, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, time was going against me. Hi, Claire. Hi, Maxine. Um, and it, it was really hard to get all the ideas I wanted to get across and stamp and play um, across. And that wasn't, you know, Yanis or anybody like that stopping me. It was just that I, I kept getting feedback about different things all the time so what i've done is i've taken a mixture of stamps and i'm just going to create a frame thank you thank you shares yeah that was a bit uh yeah that was a little bit of a shock i must admit sort of thing um i've never left the set before either poor old john lockwood in the end came to the rescue sort of thing phoning um so what I thought we'd do is I'm going to use a mixture of the different stamp sets to create a frame which we can then colour in um, and, and create into you know, something else. So what I thought I'd do is, like I said, just make some frames up and then one will stick to um, and, and turn into something. Hi, Kim. I'm going to be honest and say I'm dreadful for um, putting sentiments on things. I have to live with a project and then put sentiments on. So sometimes prepping for Sally Tellyland is an absolute nightmare for me. You, you, you know, you're made to feel like you've got to put a sentiment on. Right, I'm going to start with the main image from the floral frames, which is this one here. And I'm just going to do a simple, um, just create a frame and not do a background per se. I have got some videos coming out um with different ideas about how to make your backgrounds up um but i thought what we do tonight is look at different ways to make frames with the stamps we've got i'm stamping in the versafine clear only because i am going to watercolor hi lynn um and i just find watercoloring quickly when i'm quicker than when i'm demoing to be quite frank so this is the main image and i will rotate my paper around and i'm just going to put it in the middle for now i would cut my and um, when I finished, I would cut everything down. So I've got to move it around. As I said on um, Create and Craft, the frames have been done so that um, this portion here and this portion here are um, wibbly lines or wobbly lines, however lines you want to call them. Um, oh, Kim, I hope you have great fun. Um, hi, Linda. And um, so the it's been done deliberately for that reason and it's been done so that there is less pressure when it comes to actually making your frame because if they don't join up um, and there's a little gap because I've drawn them all the line art is quite loose if, if that makes sense so this is using the main one here I'm going to just make a, a frame using this one um, and then I'm going to combine some of the images together. So if I ink this again and we go and I'll ink all that together there. So we've got these little mitre corners here and I've got to turn this around. So I'm sorry if I keep moving it around. It's just it makes it easier for me to, to see what I'm doing. And the lines line up. In, in the different corner. Now, if my head gets in the way, I apologise. And they create that mock square, or if you, if I started in a different way, it could have been a diamond shape as well. But as I said, they are loosely drawn, that it doesn't matter if, you know, you don't get a 100% 
frame from it. Obviously, you can use your stamp platforms if that's what you prefer as well. So now where I've got that there, you can see I've joined one side, but I've got one side that's got a slight gap. I'll lift it up to the, the camera and you can see. So I've got one side that's joined, but then I've got one side that hasn't. But when you look at the whole design, it doesn't matter because of the way everything is done. Hi, Brian. Brian made me the most beautiful necklace and earrings. They had to go on a stand. They, they went and found a little jewellery stand, Brian, just to put it all on. And that was the idea behind it. Also, what I wanted was that there wasn't any particular direction. So this could be landscape. I could turn it around and it suddenly becomes portrait if that's what I wanted it to be um, and that was important because we all have different projects in mind for different people that um, work in different ways so you could put the sentiment down here I've just got one sentiment I've stamped out I don't know where I put my die cut ones so I can put the sentiment that goes in in the center or the sentiment could go to one side um, if I was doing it that way if I did it portrait the sentiment could go across in the middle so it really didn't matter and that was important um to me that you become the actual designers of what you want to make at the end of the day so that's like joining the same one together and it works exactly the same if you were going to use the image from frame it some more from that one there so i could take this one and i could have lined this one on top and that would give me um, a frame i think it have i got one done yes i did Okay, so that's exactly the same image here, but this time I've got the, the other part of the frame and I've joined it. So that again can go that way round, it could go landscape, it could go for so that part is dangling down. You know, the choice is yours, you, you know, you design how you want it to actually be. I mean, if you if I did it in the middle of my card, you could actually do it so it was diagonal as well and make it um you know go an a5 card that was diagonal i i just got into the habit of doing a square but i must do a diagonal after seeing lots of the girls samples sorry brian and brian's so if we've got this one here so what we're going to do is i'm going to take this stamp and we're going to build on it and create a different frame so right let's put you over to one side and let me just grab my stamp block here it is um, all the frames I make tonight, um, I will give away as homework to someone. Um, and they're all on the Dolly Dimples Mixed Media card, so you'll be able to watercolour with them um, or use your pencils. Obviously, I'm using an ink that's mainly for watercolouring, not for um, alcohol pens, so apologies there. So, let's see. If I stamp this again, so I'm just going to stamp this so it goes. I'm just doing mine in the middle of my card just to make it easier. So I'm just going to take this one here. And we're just going to put this along here. If you've got any questions or um, please shout because if I can't, um, I'm honorary lady. <laughs> That's good to know, Brian. <laughs> um, please shout. Um, if I don't answer them in tonight's live, but I can do them either as a blog post or as a video, I will try and get as many as I possibly can done over the next couple of weeks. Right, so we've got that image there. And then, let's put you finally there. What I want to do is I want to take this image, which is the main one, from the um do you know i'm dreadful from remembering my stamp sets names frame it with flowers so this is we've got this one here and what i'm going to do is i want to take this and i'm just using the little dot this those three areas there and i'm just using them as a visual clue to my eye that where I'm going to line that up. So we're just going to put that there. Hi, Charmaine. Got no sound. Mind you, that's not such a bad thing, Charmaine. <laughs> right, anybody, anybody want to say anything? Now's the time. Um, 
so there we go so we're gonna, i'm just going to put this one along here and i've got that now so what what i did was i took i lift it up so you can see so where that frame ended i've taken the last little bit of the stamp that was there that little bit of leaf or whatever you want to call it frou frou fluff and I've just used it as my visual clue to go on to that end part there. And where I've got the dots, it doesn't matter now that this part is going down that way. It looks like it's got a natural flow like that. Hi, Helen. So we've got those two. So what I want, I then did was from the um, Frame It With Flowers, I've taken the corner one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to join these up with the corner. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap so we can create a frame that way. And then we're going to fill the gap with other things, as she says. So if I take this one here, now I could bring it down. I could put it so it goes along and I can fill the gap here, but we'll make it just a little bit wider. And we'll just put that there. So now I've taken, uh, I'm, you know, expanded it, making it a square in a completely, you know, different way altogether. So now we've got that there, but we've got a little bit of a gap. Now you can bring in your micron pens. So I'm just going to grab, or we can start using some of the other smaller elements. And that's why we've got the smaller elements in there. We can start, you could put a heart in the middle. You could put the music notes in the middle if you had a different background as well Do you know i've only just started and i've got ink everywhere um you could take the smaller flowers and we could add a smaller flower into that gap there and then you could add one over here so you know so the choice what you want to do is yours i'm going to go for a little heart and uh, let's grab a smaller block for a change all hermes went out today oh claire thank you um oh that's brilliant charmaine so i'm just going to take a little heart and we'll stamp it in black and i can then so i've got to rotate my work i do apologize and then i can start i can put a little heart there so i'm now going to make mine go this way and i can put and we'll put another one just going there so all i'm doing is i'm just so that that heart doesn't stand out like a sore thumb i'm just putting some in some other places i think it would work so we just put another one up there so now we've created a different frame all together using the different parts and because the lines are are, are loose like i said i'm just gonna get a cloth just to wipe my stamp down it, it doesn't matter that they don't join up and and that's what i wanted i wanted to, um, everybody to have not the pressure of worrying whether things lined up or didn't line up. But I'm just going to let that dry for a minute because I re-inked my ink pad so it's a little bit juicy and I didn't get my heat gun out. So I'm just going to put you to one side because I wanted to share one thing with you as well. Because someone brought it up for me. So, what I've got here, which one is it? Let's do this one. What's this one. So what I've got here is I've already done this frame and it's taken um, the main image from frame it with flower no not frame it with flat yeah frame it with flowers and floral frames and someone asked about the dots i got a message about the dots so i thought i'd show you now you can do different things with the dots you can create a background with the dots you can do it to put in the frame and i'll show you a different way in a moment um so what i'm going to do with the i'm just going to ink these up as is i'm going to do them black so you can see what i'm doing um I've got one where I haven't, and the frame, I'm just going to move that ink pad because I will put my hands in it. So now if I stamp this like this, it's going to cover the flowers. And all I would do is then re-stamp the flowers out and cover them. So if I put this like this, and it's not going to fit perfectly, perfectly, because the, these are more square, whereas the frames are a little bit wibbly wobbly. I've got to think of a better phrase other than wibbly wobbly, haven't I? So that now sits like that. So if I then take, where are they? A couple of the flowers that I've um, cut out, you can then 
I'm going to put a second flower over the top but make it go in a different direction and so that one now is going to go in a different so it's like a flower and it can actually hide the actual dots that you've you've done because there is a single flower um in the frame it not frame yeah in the frame it's some more you do get a single flower and all i've done is stamp that out cut it out and it can go over the top there the one we're going to do tonight i'm going to do it a little bit differently so you can use the dots like that you know it you know to bring your eye in if you did all this in green and stamped it in green it would look different again so i'm just going to put that to one side because what i wanted to do was i've got loads of paper out what did i do with you all oh you're here um so if i take let's just do a different frame for now and i'm going to get all the stamps up back to front so let's have a look so we'll take this one here and i could have got a larger block out but we'll make it work so what and i think it was sheila did it in one of the samples and i think she shared it already what she wanted to do was she wanted to take this as her starting point so if we stamp this into the center She stamped that into the center like so. And we've got the dots there. Obviously, make sure your ink block is a little bit cleaner. And then she took her whichever frame she wanted to use. Oh, I've now got ink over me again. And she actually then... It went over the petal just a little bit, but she used it as a way of lining up her frame. So she did it like that. And again, you could cut out another flower to lay on top or you make the actual dots become the feature point. So we did. So that now goes like that. Oh, my stamping's dire tonight. Well, it's dire in my eyes. And then let's rotate you round. So I've gone quiet as I concentrate. There we go. So it's gone over the edge of my block, that's why I'm touching it down gently. So if I take that away, so now you can create a frame where that the dots become the focal point. And even though they go over the actual flowers, you can take the, the flowers again, and I'm going to rotate them in a different way so it looks like a fuller flower. I mean, I'd put it on with probably 3D foam. And you can create a different looking frame. And you've got this gap here where you could put another heart. You could take one of the smaller flowers from the collection and put them there as well. So you could use the dots, um, you know, to get your eye in place to where you wanted to um, put things. Oh, Chris, I can't wait to see when you do for embroidery, because that is absolutely your your the stuff you do um, is absolutely wow. I haven't got the patience for embroidery, sadly. Um so, you know, so that's one of the ways the dots can be used. I, you can, and I wanted to be used as well for background building. So that, someone asked, so I just thought I'd quickly show that. So we're just going to put you to one side as well. Right, so what, I, this one should be dry now. So let's bring you in. And we'll do some quick colouring. Um, just tidying up my stamps. I'll put them back neater in a moment. And ink blocks. I just want to grab some water. Trying to work out where to put the water that I don't spill it. Oh. And some pens. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm using Echo Lines, but you could use um, any water based inks, dye based inks, anything like that at all, you know, to do whatever you wanted to do. I'm going to go for a yellow, an orange, and a magenta. And I want the leaves to be a dark green, blue, and a yellow. 
Mm -hmm. oh, I might add in a bit of turquoise. And I'm going to add some gold in. So let's file you somewhere. Let's file you over there. Oh no, you'll fall off there. Let's file you there. Right. I love the echo lines. Hi, Mum. Um, Dominique, I'm going to say that Paula is back on Selly Telly Land soon with an ink show, which has lots of different inks coming up. And one of them is definitely for fabric. I know because I put the pole together for her. <laughs> right. OK, so I'm just going to do some really, really quick colouring with water colouring um, because I when I demo, I just find it easier. Water colouring is a quick way of doing it for me. And it doesn't have to be daunting at all. So I'm just going to put a yellow down very quickly. And I just want to highlight colour. And I'm going to do the same for my other flowers. So the yellow is, is like you see us put white on um, stamped images, you know, to add highlights. I'm going to try and make the colour that I use be the highlight. So... And with echo lines, I can do it really, really quickly. So that's going to be a little bit of the yellow go down there. Let's grab a bit of the vermilion. And I'm just going to put a little bit of the vermilion here. Um, I will spend hours colouring because I'm now rushing doing this. But I have to be honest, my I, I, I'm on to the next part of my project. So I do like to colour quite quickly. It takes me longer with um, alcohol pens and pencils because I seem to tune out from the world when I do that. And then I'm just going to get a darker red. The Echo Lines are beautiful, beautiful pens. Um, all I'm going to say is watch this space. Um, with echo lines these have been out two or three years now but um i was very lucky when i was in frankfurt to meet up with the royal talent sakura team and see some of the stuff they've got coming but yeah no they're very juicy pens brian they, they pack down color really really quickly um They've been designed when they made the echo lines. It wasn't it. It wasn't necessarily for the art market. They wanted it to be um, a watercolor pen that was for everyone. So I'm just going to do it like that. So that looks absolutely awful, and I've done that deliberately. I'm just going to find a paintbrush. Hi, Caroline. Right, and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab some water and I'm just going to put water on. And all I want to do now is I'm going to let the let them do the work. So I'm just literally just going to dab water on the top. And I'm just going to start and just put the water onto the, the yellow areas. Because they're going to be my highlight. And I'm going to let the capillary action actually start the blending process. Um, it's a great way to get a really loose watercolour effect um, from any watercolours if you just put the colour down and then just take water and dab it around. If you're worried about your colour bleeding outside your stamped images, um, stamp and emboss and then it'll stay inside your images. I'm just going to grab some water. So You could do this, with, like I said, with your dye-based ink pads as well as OK, so like I said, all I'm going to do is all I'm doing is just putting some water on the where I put the yellow, the deep yellow colour. And let the water do its thing. OK, and you can see in places now it's starting to merge and it's doing all the blending for me. And then I'm just going to come up from 
the bottom now. So let's move my water pot over here and I won't be leaning across all the time. So I'm just going to come from the bottom and dab out the darker colour and let the two bits of water meet. And it looks a real hot mess until it dries. But you get um, a, it's a really nice way of getting a really loose watercolour effect. And I'm just cleaning the paintbrush in between. And if you feel like you've got too much water on there, just take a tissue and dab it off because you can always add colour. Because that's the nature of watercolours, they, 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 they'll carry on blending. So we've got there, I didn't put any yellow that side. Oh, let's see if I can quickly squidge some yellow in before the water. I wouldn't normally say put a watercolour pen near water, but we'll see if we can get away with it really quickly. Yeah, embossing is a nice way, as Charmaine said, to stay within the lines. So I'm just going to, as I said, I'm just putting the water on and then just, I'm just patting it and I'm going to let the water and the colours blend. Now, I'm not worried it's going outside because I actually want to blend some of the colour outside. And we've got that there. I'm going to go. Go. And then all I'm doing is just cleaning the excess colour off where I've got it. So I have to move my work around otherwise. And the echo lines, because they're um, highly pigmented as well, really help with this process as well. Right, so we've got that. And I'm not worried it will go over where the green is because we'll let it dry. So you've lost me now because I'm in colouring mode. Right, so we've got the colour very quickly going down. Oh no, the power went off again. Oh no. Oh, go for your Chinese, more important. Hi, Auntie B. So it, it's just a really, really quick way of letting the colour go down. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go off to do some of the leaves. And I'm going to go for, let's go for oh, 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 deep green or the turquoisey one. Let's go fur green. And I'm just going to put the darker colour at the base. I have got one done to show you I try and leave my watercolors to dry naturally if I can rather than heat setting them um, just have it so I'm just putting a little bit of dark at the bottom this time and I'm not filling the whole of the image in coloring can be as quick or as long as you want it to be but as I want a, um, a loose looking colour, I'm just going to do it that way. I think I might do the leaves on the flower a different colour, we'll see. We've got that going there. And then I'm just going to take another green and put it beside it. very quickly all right I should have done those ones but I'll do them in a minute we've got that there so have a look in the different sort of watercolor pens or pencils you've got that or if you've got like the Tim Holtz pencils that would do exactly the same as well 
All right, so we've got that just going really, really quickly there. Miss the food. Ah. We, because of where we were staying, we were, we went to, a, um, we stayed rather, you know, ho near the hotel as such um, in Frankfurt. We didn't really go out and about as much as I would have liked, but I'm going to be honest and say, when I looked at the amount of steps we did, I think one day we did something like six and a half, seven miles. And then the next day we did um, six and a half. And then the Monday we were only there a half day and we managed to clock up four miles. So it was actually quite nice to sit down and not go out anywhere. If I'm being honest. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just pulling my colour out very, very quickly. And I'm doing it near enough with um, a damp brush. And like I said, I'm not worried if it goes over the lines. I'm not worried where here's gone over the lines because we're going to do something with that. I'm going to be really quick now. So, so, so I'm just going up, like I said, so the brush has got water on it. But if I put the brush on my hand, you wouldn't see that there's any water in it, but it's it's damp. You can feel it stamp on the back of your hand, but it's not flooded with water. If you don't like using um, like water brushes, a lot of um, companies now do blender pens. And a blender pen does exactly the same thing as uh, a paintbrush would and water. But you don't have to use use water. You can use the blender pen instead and it will still give you the watercolour look. And it's a great way to actually get um, started um, with watercolour. And most water blender pens, doesn't matter which company, will cross over to each each thing. All right, so we've got that going really, really quickly. And as I said, I'm not worried about the bleeding out because we're going to do some bits with that in a moment. I'm going to stick to the darker colour on here. And let's colour those in because I forgot to colour those in. Actually, I might leave those ones and do something different with them. Sorry, I've changed my mind again. Okay, right. And this time I'm going to use the pen to colour it out only because I want these to be slightly darker because they're linked to the flower. I must find the original design because the original design when I drew this is, is near enough A3 in size. Okay. So that's really quick. So all I'm going to do is take the same colour again and I just want to put a little bit of the dark here and in places. And I'm just going to put a little bit here. And as I said, that's why I'm not worried that there was a a bleed of colour and then I'm just going to go a, a lighter green so now I'm, I'm just colouring and ignoring that the lines were there from the frame I'm just going to turn this round um, some blender nibs can fray it depends on the ones you go for uh, Lynn it it's that horrible old adage, and I sound dreadful when I say this now. You know, sometimes if you buy cheap, you buy twice, and that's not meant to sound facetious. So it's going for, like, this is my Talons one. This is this is a solid nib. So the, the Echoline one, the actual pen, is actually a, a brush. And it bends, and it, you know, so I can move it. Whereas the Blender pen... It, so it doesn't split. This one is actually a solid nib. It does. It's not a brush at all. So when you actually use it, you can. Um, 
it doesn't it's designed deliberately not to fray so if I was going to use it here it doesn't spread out like the brush pen would so mine has been obviously used and abused as you can see by the colour on the tip and you just you can just take the colour away. Um, and it is, it's looking for an, a blender pen that's got a solid nib. is better than the brush ones because those solid nibs seem to be a little bit tougher. You're just thinking the same. Yeah, it is. I think there's some, there's some items that we get that are a really good bargain and they're brilliant. But there's sometimes some things... For me as well, I'm a little bit of a snob with rubbers. <laughs> I can spend a small fortune on a rubber, but that's because when I want it to rub out, I don't want it to affect the work that I've done. So I'm just going to take the green and I'm just blending it together. And, I'm, and again, I'm using a lot of water because I want the capillary action to blend the two colours together. And as they dry they'll spread out as the water dries Got and I'm going to just bring out some of the green here grab a block I just want to add a little bit more green in places let's get a bigger brush oh take that out yeah it depends isn't it sort of thing I mean right all I'm doing with the bigger brush is I'm taking the colour and I'm just dabbing now because I want to create. This is why I wasn't worried about the colour bleeding out from the flower. Because now I'm just going to use the colours that are on there. To create a really soft wash. Now I'm, there, I, there is a lot of water on here so it will need to dry. I'll probably have to get my heat gun out. I was trying to avoid it. Now you could leave it just like that. You don't need to. I'm just putting a little bit more green in places. You don't need to blend out. You could leave it clear. But I just wanted to create so it looked a little bit like there's a lot more greenery here than there actually is. And also you don't notice the framing as much either. we've got right so we've got that there let's move let's use you up I might as well rather than waste you because that would be criminal all right okay we'll clean that like that so so now you know we've created a quick water brush and if I lift it up because I've used a lot of water there are elements here that, um, you know, that have leaked out and that doesn't, it, it's all for the watery effect. I'm going to have to go and get my heat gun. I thought I might not be able, I might get away without it, but I am going to have to. Let's heat this up. So all I want to do is I just, I'm, it's, it's not going to dry perfectly because obviously the water's gone into the card but I want to do some other bits and pieces with it and I just need the, at least the top layers to work with it. I'm just going to do the reverse as well. If you, if you get into the habit of doing the reverse as well as the front it helps with the card not buckling. Um, so it, it takes away all the buckling effect from the water because you're now drying the water out from both sides especially if you want to work on it straight away right let's do you there okay so we've got that really quickly and I just oh, I thought I'd get it out oh. just wanted to grab a micron pen Oh, three dozen. I do love a micron. 
and I want a zero, two, or a three. Okay. Mine are so well loved, they've lost all the numbers at the top. And all I'm going to do then is to take my eye away from some of the areas that I'm going to just colour in some of the little bits. With a micro pen. Now, ideally, this should be drier than it is because it's the same with any pen if you if you use it on a wet product um it can soak up some of the moisture and that's when your pens stop working or they get all gunky and horrible but we're going to risk it so there we go so now because i'm introducing the, the darker color now i could have done this a dark green um and that would have blended in but because I've done it the black, any areas that I don't like my watercolouring on, you'll suddenly seem to fade into the background because of having the black colour. I maybe could have gone for a thicker pen, but that would have sped up the whole process a little bit. Sorry, I'm, I'm colouring and I'm not looking at comments. I will catch up. I know Charmaine's in the, in the chat, so if there's anything you need to know. So where we go. Now this I would will cut down and make it into a card front. Um, I'm just doing it on a bigger piece of card. If you're trying a new concept or a new idea out, it's always better to do it on a um, a bigger piece of card because you can always chop it down or chop out the bits you don't like. If you give yourself a smaller piece of card and you, you don't know how the stamps look or, or work, what and then it doesn't line up where you want everything to be, it can be quite frustrating. I mean, all I would do then is just make it look like th that was the plan all along. And move my sentiment around. So all of a sudden now, let's move you guys out of the way. Because I've added those little bits of black in, it's changed the look again of the card or the card, the frame. And now it's not necessarily the frames that we stamped before. It's now um, like a floral picture. Okay, I'm going to colour these out rather than watercolour them. I already decided I was going to colour them out. Like I said, I think I could have treated myself. I've got enough micron pens. I probably could have got done with getting a slightly bigger nib. But hey ho. Right, there we go. And then the last one. And one of the things I really wanted from the stamp set was that it didn't matter which direction it went in. So it could go that way round. I know the hearts, I mean, if I was going to go, go this way round, I would have put the hearts facing me. I've done mine so it goes that way, but it could have equally have gone that way. And it really doesn't matter at all which way sort of thing. Um, Versifying Claire Nocturne, I, yeah, thank you, Alison. I did, I stamped in a, a black. For demos, you'll find a lot of us on Selly Telelam mainly use black. And the main reason for it is the camera, the lights in the studios are really, really, really bright. And if we use too light a colour, what ends up happening is it bleaches out. You can't see what we're doing. OK, so all I'm going to do now with the Micron pen is if I let's get up, down, up, down. So where I've got the flower elements here i'm just going to add a little bit of extra detail so where i i've got that little line there i'm going to put some dots and i literally when i do the dots i will actually just say to myself one two three four five around that line one two three four five 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 and all i do i count because then i just find if i count and keep to the same number of dots four five It just works for me. So now I've just built out the centre of the flower just a little bit more. Um, 
Yeah, pastel colours are a nightmare. Two, three, four, five. I did a demo once and I wasn't even using pastel colours and I looked up and it was like you couldn't even see what I was doing. So two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And if you and then you don't if if you follow the go either side of the line, I'll show you and I'll lift it up again. When you do your dots, so if I show you there. So the line was in the centre there, and I've just done my dots. I've just gone one, two, three, four, five around the actual line. Once you get past the line a little bit, you can stop. But it just is a quick way, if you don't want to do shading, as in dark and light, of bringing in a quick little bit of shading um, in the areas where you think it would have the shading. And all, like I said, and all I'm doing is using the lines and counting to five. I mean, you could count to three, you could count to how, whatever you want to count to, really. It's just, that's how it works in my head. So, very quickly, I've just added a little bit. I'm going to put them at my one, two, three, four, five. I've just added a little tiny little bit of shading to each of them, um, you know, to show them off in a totally different way. Right, let's put there. And that would then be it's up to you whether i would leave the hearts the color they are why i wouldn't color them in um at all because it's a nice contrast and then when it gets cut down this would make a seven by seven card front because i would score probably um a lot i make a top fold card so i would score there cut it down and it would make a seven by seven card you could cut it down even further I could cut it down so it was down, literally, you don't have to have the whole of the flower image in, but part of it, and you could then, that's roughly a six by six. So you don't have to have absolutely everything in place. Now, the one the last thing I'll do on this image is I'm going to take that square again. Now, as I said, the square was there to create backgrounds. Now, if you've got watercolour pens or you've got smaller ink pads, for example, like the standard Distress, um, or you've got the, like the little, you know, you can get the little Dauber ink pads. Um, they work, you know, just as well. So all I'm doing is I'm looking at the dots and I'm going to use my actual watercolour pen. And I'm, and I'm lining it up within that bit there so I can see how many to colour. I'm just going to huff on it. And I'm just going to put some dots there in the green just to make them stand out. So this time round I'm looking and I'm going to go four that way and six that way. Yeah. There we go. And also by doing this, it's another way to take away if there's any colour that's bled from the flowers. So we've got here, I'm going to go over this part here. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can still ink and take away the ink with a cloth. Okay, we've got that now added there, and again, then it totally changes the look. And anywhere where I've got a little bit of loose colour, it changes that there as well. What huffed on a paint? I love doing that. It could be an anything card. I love that, Charmaine. If these now, because these are watercolour and they stand out a little bit too much, if you just get your paintbrush and just dab them and knock them back a little bit. You could have some stand out and you could have some being a little bit more of a shadow. When watercolour is dry, it will get lighter it just, because of the wetness here. So suddenly it can change the look again. And I'm just going to colour that yellow bit out. I might make that flower blend a bit more. There we go. So then it's just what sentiment you use, whether you use one of the die cut sentiments or the stamped one or whatever ones you've got. But suddenly if I put that in the middle I've created a really really quick card um, just by you know just by doing it that way and it 
like I said, if I hadn't stamped the heart, it could have gone that way. And my sentiment could go there or it could have been a sentiment that goes over three or four lines. I could have had it this way. Ignore the hearts and my sentiment can go that way. And that's what I wanted from it. Depending on what you wanted to do with the project um, and which way you wanted it to look, you then become the designer of the it's not a set design it's up you know it's for you then to become that, the designer and get lost in the creativity she says hopefully right i hope that gives you a, a quick way i've got i have got lots more coming out showing different other ways one video that i am doing is if you've got the star flower frames um there are some elements in there that can extend these frames i've just got to edit that big time so what I'm going to do is, so there's that one. I did do one just in case I didn't get it finished and I have dried it. But I changed it around and instead of using the heart. So what I did is I actually joined the corner and made the corner come over a little bit more and changed the way it looked. So where this time around, where I used that leaf to join the end part, what I did on this one was... I actually used another leaf to join it. So it, it's moved this bit even further. So the, the rectangle shape is smaller and that one is larger. I hope that makes sense. So if I'm more than happy if you want them. So what have I got here? Oh, she says. So you've got those two. I've got that frame, that frame, that frame, that frame. And I've got some other frames in the back behind me. I'm looking behind me that I've done. If you'd like me to send out the frames so you can um, have them as your homework. Hold on, I'm just looking. Yeah. Um, I'm more than happy to do it. All I'm saying is just say a yes, please on the video. Um, and I'll just pick a random name and I'll get those in the post to you. And then you've got the... A starting point with some of the frames you can cut them down cut them up um you know do whatever you want oh i've even cut some little flowers out that you can have as well <laughs> um so and then you've got all of those just to have a starting point for you for when your stamps arrive so thanks ever so much for your time and company um i hope that just gave you a, a little idea of different a, a way that you can use the stamps um, and I, please do share what you make. I love to see what people make. Um, only because you guys will play with them in a completely different way um, than the way I've played with them. Because in my head, I've designed them to be a set, a set way. And then you'll you'll see a different way. And I think that is so cool. Um, and a great way, great memory for me to try something different. I will start sharing the videos um, if YouTube... Well, if my internet does as it's told, let's be, if I'm being honest, um, as if we're having woeful inf internet at the moment. So, and I'll, I will share them in the group and I'll, I'll so you can see all the different ideas. So, I'm put, look, I'm being really good. I'm putting all my stamps back on the right stamp set. That And the only reason I'm doing that is about the only way I remember what each stamp set is called. I'm dreadful. Charmaine tells me off all the time for not mentioning the names. But thank you ever so much. Again, just a yes, please. I'll pick out a random winner and I'll get them in the post to you and you can finish them off or cut them up or do whatever you want to do with them. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. See you all soon. Bye.